In this question, our task is to take the solutions we've derived for the associated Legendre equation, also here written out in self-adjoint form, and compute the inner product between different eigenfunctions p and m and plm. Before we get started though, there's one question that might initially throw us off. Look at the associated equation and ask yourself, is it m or l that I should be using as the eigenvalue? There are two ways to answer this. There's a right way and, well, there's a not so right way. The right way is to go all the way back to the original PDE for which you're interested in solving. For example, you can begin with a physical problem for which the solution is given by Laplace's equation spherical coordinates. If you do the separation of variables for the PDE, you'd find three differential equations to solve, one each for the radial, angular, and azimuthal coordinates. The m appears as an eigenvalue in the angular coordinate, and the l appears as an eigenvalue in the azimuthal coordinate. Typically though, the value of m is known through periodic boundary conditions in the angular direction, so it's really the l numbers that are the unknown eigenvalues. Now that's a long explanation and the correct interpretation, but really, how would you have known had you been given this ordinary differential equation and nothing else? There's another way to see what's supposed to be the eigenvalue. You can just note from the above orthogonality relation for p and m and p l m that the m's are fixed, whereas the subscripted l's are varied. So when we check for orthogonality, we're varying the eigenvalues L and not M. Moving onwards now, we put the equation into sturm liouville form. So our P of X is 1 minus X squared. Our Q of X is negative M squared over 1 minus X squared. And our R of X is 1, with lambda the eigenvalue being L times L plus 1. Notice that I wasn't quite accurate before when I said that the eigenvalues are L. They're rather functions of L. The eigenfunctions are PLM of x, and so we know from the usual sturm liouville theory that the orthogonality relation guarantees that the integral of PLM and PNM times R of x is equal to zero so long as L is not equal to N. Now focus on the integral when N is equal to L, so we define I as the integral of PLM squared. By the formula of part B relating the associated and the original Legendre function, we can write the integrand as a function of the mth derivative of PL of x. And then finally, from Rodriguez's formula of part A, we can write PL of x as this expression containing the lth derivative of x squared minus 1 to the L. Honestly, at this point, there's no real easy way to motivate the algebraic manipulations to come. What we could do is try and split up the integrand as these two parts, u and dv, and then apply integration by parts, m plus L times. The point is that this will hopefully allow us to remove the derivatives from the dv factor and then transfer it onto the u factor. But as to why this works, well, because we know the answer. So we integrate by parts m plus l times. And luckily, because the 1 minus x squared factor, the boundary terms are always 0. The integral i is now this expression that involves two m plus l derivatives nearly in succession. Let's now focus on the outermost m plus l derivative and apply Leibniz's theorem to the curly braces. This gives a summation over two factors, which we write as the circled 1 and 2. The key is that the 1 is only non-zero if the number of derivatives k is less than 2m, which is the maximal power of x. Similarly, 2 will only be non-zero if the 2m plus 2l minus k derivatives don't end up zeroing the highest polynomial, which is 2l. These two constraints together tell us that k is less than or equal to 2m, and k is greater than or equal to 2m, so the only non-zero term in the above is for k is equal to 2m. This gives us the fact that the m plus lth derivative of the curly brace is equal to this single term. Now the 2mth derivative of 1 minus x squared to the m is easy to compute, because if you were to expand the bracket, the only surviving term would be the highest order polynomial. So this results in the minus 1 to the m times 2m factorial. We can then do the same for the 2 lth derivative. Combining this gives us a slightly more manageable expression for the m plus kth derivative of the curly brace. It's now time to return the integral i and put in our above result. It only remains to compute this integral of 1 minus x squared to the l, which we call kl, and, well, this is just a dirty trick. Basically, we applied the integration by parts once, with u is equal to 1 minus x squared to the l, and dv is equal to dx. The boundary terms disappear as usual, but we're left with another integral that we can't quite evaluate on the right. 
We then write the integrand in a form that allows us to write the right-hand side in terms of kL minus 1 and kL. Moving the kLs to the same side and simplifying, we're left with a recurrence relation for kL. It's not that easy to see what the final form of kL is, but you can start just by iterating the relation, that is, do it for l is equal to 0, l is equal to 1, l is equal to 2, and so on, until you find the pattern. The answer is that kL of x is 2 to the l plus 1 times l factorial squared over 2l plus 1 factorial. At last, we stick kL of x into the integral i, simplify the factorials, and we're left with i is equal to 2 times m plus l factorial over 2l plus 1 times l minus m factorial, which is the value of the inner product for the two equal eigenfunctions. This completes the question.